Welcome to Smart Amazing Conversations with Dr. Nancy, a podcast that takes a look at stories of life and leadership for smart, amazing women and men like you. The way I can give support to the world right now is by showing up. Uh, the most important thing is don't think just that you have to bring anything. Bring yourself. Show up. If you are in a position of leadership and a position of management, bring women along with you. Supporting women is Dr. Nancy's passion and her purpose. And talking with other women and men who promote women's leadership is one of her favorite things to do. I've yet to meet a woman who did not know what she really wanted. She was just either afraid to ask the questions or she was afraid of what the answers meant. Their stories connect us and help us understand that the possibilities are endless if we support each other and lift other women up. Trust is created by persistent identity. I show up in my conversations, I build relationships, I show up as myself time and time and time again, and trust is built. It's one conversation at a time. Dr. Jackie Glenn is a prominent and reputable contributor to the diversity, equity, and inclusion industry. During her 30-year experience in the field, She has launched a suite of online and in-person global training programs to empower the workforce at every level. Dr. Glenn employs her expertise to bring awareness to the multifaceted impact of an all-inclusive, multicultural, and multi-generational workforce. Her strategies bring a distinct level of innovation and profitability that help to establish diversity, equity, and inclusion as a business imperative. Over the arch of her career, Dr. Glenn has worked within the corporate world as well as through her self-created enterprise. While serving as Chief Diversity Officer at Fortune 500 EMC Corporation, Dr. Glenn pioneered multiple groundbreaking initiatives in diversity, equity, and inclusion that secured EMC's foothold in computer storage technology. As a result of her drive and leadership, Dr. Glenn was an integral part of the company's integration into Dell Technologies, where she co-led the diversity, equity, and inclusion charge for a global workforce. In her current position as founder and CEO of Glenn Diversity Inclusion and HR Solutions, Dr. Glenn leans on her decades of experience to bring transformations of positive, lasting change to corporate cultures. Now, here's Dr. Nancy and her guest, Dr. Jackie Glenn. This is a wonderful time. Welcome. Let's talk thank about you. you. So, so Dr. Nancy, once again, thank you for having me on. And I'll just, um, for your audience, we'll just talk a little bit about who I am and um, my background. And so um, my name is Jacqueline Glenn, but you know, in the corporate space, they know me as Jackie Glenn or Dr. Jackie Glenn. And I was, I'm originally from Jamaica. I was born in Kingston, Jamaica and came to this country at the age of 19. And I came to this country because my mom had a friend who loved my mom cooking. My mom um, at a little restaurant that she would make um, lunch in the daytime and serve it to different office building. And um, her friend from Shawnee Mission, Kansas, um, came out and got a hold of some of my mom cuisine and really fell in love with my mom's cooking. And I always said the rest is history. But when I graduated from high school, she asked me what I wanted to do. And I wasn't quite sure. I was going to a, a, a school that they, I call it a finishing school, Dr. Nancy, where they train you to be a secretary back in the days. Yeah. And she asked me what I wanted to do. And I wasn't quite sure. And But I knew I loved children. So she was looking for a nanny and she sponsored me to come to the U.S. and um, take care of her two small kids. And so I left sunny Jamaica on the beach and I migrated to um, Shawnee Mission, Kansas um, as 19 years old um, to a place where it was foreign to me. And I always tell this story, and I think it's in my book, when I showed up at the airport, um, they were standing there with my name on a plaque. And I, I just burst out crying because it dawned on me that here I am. I think about my 19-year-old daughter and she would not have been prepared to leave me and go anywhere to a foreign country. But I did it because to backtrack a little bit, I'm the fifth child out of 11 children and I'm smack in the middle. And when she asked if I wanted to come to US, she had I was um, her second choice. She had asked my older sister and my older sister had said no. And I said yes. And I ended up in Shawnee Mission, Kansas, where honestly, 
Dr. Nancy, no one looked like me there. And I, you know, and you read my book, it says from nanny to CDO. And so, um, you know, fast forward, I, I worked as a nanny and a housekeeper and whatever she asked me to do. And she was wonderful because she knew that I was young and that this was not going to be the end of my story. This was a means to an end, as we like to say. So I worked with her for two years and then I had families in Boston. And after I fulfilled my two years so I could get my green card, she released me to come and live in Boston with my family in Boston. I ended up meeting my husband here, going back to school. Um, all of that is in the book. Um, having two beautiful daughters and a stepson. And I've been married to my, met my husband in Boston and just celebrated our 40th wedding anniversary. And I sort of fast tracked and I wrote the book, Dr. Nancy, because I felt that sometimes people take a look at your life now and my life and they don't know our story. And it's so important for people to know people's story. And, um, you know, I think especially I look at my, um, my daughters, people that are coming up um, through the ranks, our children, daughters and son. To understand, I remember being in corporate America and saying that, you know, I wanted to make sure people asking me, how did I navigate the corporate ladder? And I did that just based on how I was raised by a mom who only had an eighth grade education. She stopped going to school at eighth grade because yeah. yeah. she had to work. And the book is really around 10 gems that I call my gems that my mom instilled in me as I grew up in Jamaica. And so I'll stop there. I wanted to put it out as I was yeah. in an industry. I worked in the um, healthcare industry and I left and went into the high tech industry. And in the healthcare industry, there was a lot of women that, that looked like me or you. And I felt like I had a lot of mentors and people that I could lean on. When I left the healthcare industry and went into the technology industry, it was a different story. And I felt like I wanted to leave that industry better than I found it. And thus the book came out. Yeah. Well, and, and you've now started your, I mean, all that experience, then you've rolled into developing your own uh, Glenn diversity, inclusion and HR solutions. So you're taking all your knowledge and all your expertise and you're helping others to do the same. Well, I, I've got the book. I've read the book, uh, the book. And the stories are all amazing. And every one of your gems are so very important to me. These are these are my these are foundation pieces for my for who I am too. And and for everybody that I know that you know the people that I want to spend time with. I mean, we can go over several of them. But you know the one the one thing that I that you know meeting you and being with everybody on this wellness cruise uh, uh, was it's really about relationships. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that a lot of people understand that, whether you're in corporate America or I've got an equestrian center here, a 23 acre equestrian center with horses and the people I work with, we are a team. We get to right. we work together. It's about relationships, but everything is about relationships. I, I think COVID for me was kind of the, um, the wake up call to who I really, really wanted to spend time with and what were the things that were important in my life. And sometimes we need those wake up calls. Mm -hmm. but I don't know about you, but I've decided where I'm going to spend my time and who I'm going to spend my time with and what I'm going to spend my time doing and making a difference in this world. And all of these things that you talk about are relationship gems, you know, uh, being authentic. You know, that's that's so that's so important in companies right now. You know, and, and I think uh, the old school that, that I was taught and you were taught, uh, I worked in healthcare also, and I worked for the Sisters of Mercy for Mercy Hospitals. I was the director of an employment, employee assistance program, which not only served the EAP for that organization, the thousands of employees there, but also then we had other corporations that we brought into the EAP business. But it was all always about relationships. Absolutely. But Absolutely. I but I had to wear a suit and I had padded shoulders. I wore a tie and my skirt covered. Everything was covered. 
you, you, you didn't see any skin on my body, you know, and I had bad shoulders and a tie. So, you know, we, we've gone through that transition of what we thought we were supposed to be in business. What right, right. To, do, to look like to be successful. And this book basically says all those things are not right. What it's about right. is being a human being. <laughs> <laughs> right. And showing up as your authentic self, you know, authenticity is one of my favorite gems. They're all my favorite, but I felt like I, I spent so much time trying to mirror um, what society thought I should be, that it was exhausting. And I think by the time I figured out that, you know, Jackie, you just have to show up with your accent and all it was, um, you know, something I wanted to make sure that wasn't repeated by my daughters or any other, my nieces, nephews, or any other woman or men that were coming up behind me in the workforce. And so your point on um, COVID changing um, us, I would, I don't know, you might have been listening in on my call, um, metaphorically speaking, because I was just having a conversation about how COVID has changed. Even the way we showed up, look at what I have on today on the call. It's an African print outfit. I would have never thought years ago to wear this into a corporate setting, but I think COVID has shown us that life is fragile. I call the period of COVID up until now, Nancy, and beyond maybe, the era of the five Ps. And for everyone who's listening, that five P's is the pandemic, protests, politics, prejudice, and polarization. So we, we went into the pandemic. We saw the murder of George Flores Park protests. Yeah. Um, it was a, um, poly, um, a election year. So everywhere we turned, we were seeing election that was um, on the TV. And then um, people were protesting. And then with all of this came polarization. So I would get calls from, not you, Nancy, because you're so comfortable in your own skin and you show up so authentically, whether or not you're in a group of women of color and you might be one of the, the two or three um, white women there, you still show up authentically. Not a lot of people can do that. A lot of people are polarized. And what I found that I was getting a lot of calls or my white girlfriends asking me, Jackie, so what do I say? How do I say this? And it I dawned on me that we're in the era of the five Ps and people are, and one of those Ps are polarization. And so I've changed. I showed up, I show up with my accent and all. I find it to be less draining on my mental health. And I but show that, up. But that accent has made you famous. That's you. It has. It has. Accent I, occurs, it creates uh, the famous Dr. Jackie, you know. So. Yes. But, you know, when you're younger in your career, not necessarily <laughs> age, you sometimes um, want to conform to what the, 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 the organization and, um, you know, expect of you or nowadays days, someone just asked me to speak on um, symptom of a white centric organization where there are things that I grew up with in corporate America that I worked 70% of my workforce was white middle-aged male. Yeah. And there were things that I was taught that now that I looked back at it and I'm thinking, what was I thinking? Um, but I think that if I can do anything else, and I think I put this in my, my book, um, if I can help somebody as I passed along in this life, then my living is not in vain. Yeah. And I don't think any of us want our living to be in vain. And as we, as we continue to age to perfection, one of my goal is to have this raw, candid conversation about authentic, authenticity, um, resilience, how we get up, we brush ourselves off and we show up. Um, I always show up with, with trust and integrity, responsibilities. And those are just some basic tenets that I've lived my life by. But, you know, it, it, it begs to argue, does everyone understand how important this is for us to continue to, to thrive as human being and support each other? And that's why I talk about lift, I name it lift as I climb. Because I, you lift me, Nancy, I lift you. And it's something that I think we all have got to practice doing no matter what ethnicity we are. Well, before this is over, then you're gonna be recruited to be one of the Lift Women, Lift, lift Women Up campaign 
part of our campaign and you're going to get Absolutely. out 52 weeks of lifting another woman or even men. We can't do it without men. We have to right. be on the same point. But, but, you know, I mean, the, the thing that's so important that you keep talking about is that, you know, I also came from a place where, you know, I thought I was supposed to be a certain way. Right. And, and, I, and I was dying. I was dying in that position. I was dying wearing that awful suit. I was dying trying to say and do the right things. And uh, basically, I don't really know how to keep my mouth shut, which is good, because <laughs> I think that's why I'm where I'm to where, where I am today is because, you know, I I didn't you know, women have to be brave. We have to get used to being uncomfortable, co being comfortable, being uncomfortable. Right. And, everybody's going to like us, you know, and I think that was part of the whole, whole deal with women, you know, not only that competition, women don't know how to compete. They don't know how to negotiate and they don't know how to compete. And if we can learn those skills, which is basically there's a pie big enough for all of us mm -hmm. and that, you know, what you do well, I don't do well. And maybe I don't want to do, but I would love to give that to you. And maybe there's something that you don't like that you don't want to do that you can give to me that I really like to do. And, and I think this is these gems just talk about the importance of that. We start to have those kind of discussions that, you know, and of course, faith is, is so important, but empathy, empathy yeah. is beginning to understand other people where they're coming from. And, and that that difference, those differences make us special, just special in that whole realm is that our differences make us even better when we come together. Those differences make a whole. They make a whole. So one, one of the things I always like to say, I think um, a lot of us, um, I, you know, in today's um, era that I found is the lack of empathy or people not understanding how to show up empathetic and how to, and, and I, I always say this, that I saw a sign somewhere and it says all empathy require of us, all of us is to step outside our own, own emotions and to view things entirely from the other person's standpoint. It's not saying that Dr. Nancy, that I'm going to agree with everything you say, but I'm approaching the conversation with you with empathy. And it just requires me to take my emotions out of it and deal with you and put myself in your shoe. And I think a lot of, um, I teach a lot about how do you show up with empathy? Um, you're not saying you agree with everything I said, but you're listening with empathy. And I think we're so quick to respond, as you said, and, and, not, and not hear the other person or meet people where they are. I always say, extend grace. Yeah. You know, there's so much going on in the DEI arena where you're on that side and I'm on that side and, um, and, yeah, and us and, us and them, you and, yeah, yeah. Us and, them. and yeah. I, you know, do a lot of teaching around just extending grace, just asking people to say more about that and to listen because we're so quick to respond and we're not activating our listening skill. I extend a lot of grace every time I go on an international call. I get called colored. We actually don't call black people colored anymore. It's either black or African American. That's but instead of getting upset, Dr. Nancy, I just sort of make a note. Yeah. Of, call me colored. And I send them a note. And I said, you know, on our session today, you refer to me as colored. Although you're in another country, and that might be the term you use to describe black and brown people in America. We do African, and I, I give a little article and I use it as a teachable moment. Yeah. I, I try, and I know everybody can't be, but I think when we get to a point where we're approaching these discussion with empathy and meeting people where we are, then we'll, can, we'll start to really churn at this, as you said, lift each other up and really have a society where we can all exist um, with with some peace because right now there's just so much discord out there that ugh. yeah we, we we've got to, we've got to do something we can't keep doing this uh well you know I, i'm a psychologist so one of the things that i've always been very very interested in is behavior and and uh why we do the things we do but really watching behavior you know we make judgments and it's i mean if we stop and we think about it somebody walks in the room and we all do it. And, and sometimes it's more unconscious than conscious. 
Right. We make judgments by that person, what they're wearing, how they walk into the room. We're, you know, we, we were, uh, there was a movie called Liar, Liar. And he <laughs> not, he could not, you know, he had to say exactly what came in his mouth. So somebody would walk in and go fat, ugly, stupid, you know, but the point is, is that we, we have to really start to become self-aware. Right. And self-awareness you talk about. And I truly believe that's so very valuable. Empathy is definitely part of that. But self-awareness is mm-hmm. what is the thinking? What is what is it? Is my cultural back? What are the things in my own life that 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 cause me to think and behave and, and say and do the things I do? And that self-awareness is that that education that we all need time to have with ourselves because you know, every day for me is a, is another, you know, um, California is a very diverse, uh, I live in California and I love it because it's such a diverse population and there's so many different in, entities that, that you can learn from. So it, to me, it's always a very valuable lesson, but I also have to be consistent. I mean, I have to be aware of how right. my, my culture and my background and my beliefs affect the way I see people and what I begin to think about them, which oftentimes is absolutely incorrect. We, you know, it takes us five minutes to make judgments, but it'll take us maybe five contacts with that person later to change our minds. Right. So, so we, we, we just need to, to wake up, be empathetic, but be more than anything self-aware. Right. So, but what, you know, when you were working in these companies, what did you see was the common theme that was causing uh, maybe the lack of inclusion, the lack of diversity in those companies? What were the things that you were seeing that were really kind of the, you know, the, the markers as to we can do better here? What, what, there was what were a couple of, of things. One was um, this notion that I'd like to call sameness, you know, sameness as in, you know, people are comfortable with their own. They um, tend to want to work with, go for drinks with people that is from the same culture and difference. Although we all know as leaders, it breeds innovation. A lot of people just would rather not change. So I would see people, I would send candidates because I used to be a recruiter and they'll always come back and say something like, Jackie's not a good fit, even though I have all the qualifications that I they needed, but I didn't look like the majority. So sameness was an, one thing. And then the other thing was as with women, it was, um, you said it earlier on, just the need to compete. And so if I'm the only woman in the group or I'm the only person of color and you bring another person, then I'm not gonna, my relevance or my significance is gonna get diminished because this person is gonna. So this old notion of the slices of the pie and us being taught, um, let um, leverage to think that there's only one slice for you, Nancy and me. So if you get the slice of pie, I won't get it. So I'm not going to support Nancy because they can only have one woman instead of thinking of the pie as having endless slices and we can always be in there together. And another thing is insecurity, just being insecure of having someone else come into your space. But I think if I had to just choose one, I would say sameness. Everyone likes to work with their own people that's from the same community that looks like them, that thinks like them. Um, even though we have their humor study out there that shows that having difference in the workplace breed innovation and without innovation, company die. You and I together are rock star because we are from two different backgrounds and something that you miss, Nancy, I'd be like, oh, wait a minute, Nancy. And when we don't have people like you and I collaborating, working together, we get into trouble like yeah. a lot of company because everybody's in the room. Everybody's thinking the same. And an ad come up like that 2017 Dove ad where they have a black woman taking a shower with a Dove body wash and she slowly as she shower becomes white. Now, oh. I was in that room. Oh. Oh. Oh, I no. would say, wait a minute. This is telling me that I'm dirty, my skin color. But nobody saw that in the marketing department. They let that ad go out and go to Are print. You I, I didn't see that ad. Look it, look it up, the Dove Body Wash ad 2017. 
Okay. Okay. And that tells me that shame it, on them. Shame on them. Oh they didn't totally add after much backlash. But my point in bringing it up is that people like sameness, but sameness do not read innovation. It's not disruptive. Everyone is sitting in the room and agreeing with you because you all think alike and are from the same background. But if you have someone like me in there, I've been called a disruptor because I don't look like the majority. And I'm going to say, wait a minute. What I, as a Black woman, is reading into that ad is that I'm dirty. And when I wash with your body wash, I'm going to become white. Is that what you're trying to convey? But nobody, but someone put, um, threw a twist on it the other day. I was referencing it. And they said to me, Jackie, what if there's a black and brown person in the room and they gave their opinion, but because they're in the minority, their opinion is not taken. Yeah. And so that could be another point. Yeah. So yeah. there are sameness is the biggest, um, you know, roadblock to having a diverse workplace, to having collaborative work group, and to have us all coming together, Nancy with from different background, different school of thought, different education and, and collaborating together to breed innovation. And the team that has difference always succeed over the team that doesn't have difference. And, and, they, have, and they have a lot more fun. Absolutely. <laughs> <Don't> you, <laughs> well, absolutely. no, I, mean, I, 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 I enjoy you all so much when we were, we were having such a great time on that cruise and when we went into. And even before that, Nancy, we were at the <laughs> beach together. Oh, um, yep, yep. We've, been we've, we've been around. We've been around. So not just the cruise, but well, we, I, I'm looking for more. I'm looking for more great times together. For sure. Absolutely. Sign me but, up. You know what? This is, a, this is a great handbook. This is, this is, it's not showing up. This is a great handbook because really the stories and, and most importantly, it talks about mentoring. It talks about the support that pe once, once one person gets in your corner, it can mm -hmm. sometimes one person is in your corner, supports you good, bad, and indifferent and is there that you can trust that's right. another gyms and that you can, and they can help you be who you are or, or just whatever you want to be. Uh, it's that's what this is about. So uh, yeah. it's it, it's but it's going to take us all. OK, so the Lift Women Up campaign, we're going right. to get you the information and, uh, you know, lift as we all climb. If you take somebody else up the ladder with you as you're going, not only do you have comp good company, but uh, you're building you're building such strength and such uh, such great character and, and and empathy and trust in that company and in in relationships because it really is about relationships you know how do we how do we want to be treated we right. isn't that the whole the whole thing how do you want to be treated well treat and, other people the same way and it's so funny that your campaign is lift to women up and my book is lift as i climb because I think it should be the, it's an instructional biography that really instruct people on how you lift women up, but not just women. And I wanna, if I say nothing else, I will, I say this all the time when I speak globally that my career evolved because white men were my mentors. They weren't afraid of my, my boldness because I like you, Dr. Nancy, couldn't keep my mouth shut. And I just showed up and said what I felt like, not in a rude way, but in a firm way. And I was labeled, but white men saw something in me that I did not see in myself. And a lot of them helped me and helped me carved out my career. So today I'm, so I wanted to say that because even though we're talking about women lifting women up, there's some wonderful, there's a few good men out there and more than a few that oh, have God. shaped my career yeah. and have pulled me into the professional I am today. And I would be remiss if I did not say that. Well, I would be remiss to not counter that and include it with that is that you know men really do want to help but they have to show that you got to ask them you got to ask them and show you gotta them ask them and, and tell them what you want I, I when i've been speaking with a with a co-ed group and i start to talk about male mentors and male sponsors there there's almost like this they, they let the air out <sighs> because they really just want to be a part mm -hmm. of the group and we're all in this together and you Absolutely. know, 
when we do that, we're, we're going we're gonna to make such great progress. But you're, you're doing great things out in the world. And uh, I want people to go and read your book and learn more about you, get you out there speaking more about the great things that we need to all understand and do. So how do they reach you and where do they find you? So you can reach me on um, LinkedIn at um, Dr. Jackie Glenn on LinkedIn. And you can also just reach me by reaching out to me on email. Um, and it's Jackie at Glenn Diversity Solutions with the S dot com. But the quickest way to reach me is LinkedIn. If you're LinkedIn, just go and look for Dr. Jackie Glenn and I'm right there. Uh, thank you so much for, for reaching out and having me on today, Dr. Nancy. And I'm hoping that this is the start of a even more um, deeper relationship. I know I get to see you at least once or twice a year, but yeah. I'm hoping that with the book lift as I climb and with your campaign, Women um, Lift Women Up, that we have a collaboration going here that will be fruitful. Well, we're, we're doing it right now. This is it. We're, this is just a piece of it, but uh, no, I mean, it's, it, it, this is, you're, you're, uh, you have, a, you have such wonderful positive energy and great humor and, uh, I, I think there's so much we can do together. Absolutely. So thank you so much for having me today. And I did get my, my email from um, uh, someone Melissa. just sent me an email. Melissa. Melissa. Okay. I had to look. So I will definitely uh, um, jump on to the campaign and I'm open. We'll reconnect soon. Uh, you just contact if there's something that you need. You, you know that I'm just a email away or absolutely you know, just contact me. You have All a right. wonderful day and you, and I love your beautiful colors and I should go get something more bright. <laughs> okay. I will see you soon. And thank you so much for um, reaching out. I appreciate thank it. You. Take thank care. You. Have a great Bye -bye. day. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Thank you. If you enjoy these smart, amazing conversations, please subscribe, rate and review them on Apple podcasts. Spotify, Amazon, or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. And read and enjoy more amazing stories in my books, In This Together, How Successful Women Support Each Other in Work and Life, and Leading Women, 20 Influential Women Share Their Secrets to Leadership, Business, and Life. Thank you for listening.